The Lord, I thank God for this time. Thanksgiving season is always a wonderful time, and I'm just so grateful to have a testimony to share. Last Sunday, I went to Lokogoma to church. I actually planned to go to two churches. I ended up going, being in three churches, in three services, including we. I went to Lokogoma, had a good time, and came out. And as we came out of the of the church, we made a turn. We made a turn to the left and entered the road on our way to Apo Church. As we were going, there was a motorbike in front of us. And we, we, Jerry was going slowly, and I just sat like this, looking at the road clearly and seeing what was happening. Then we saw two people coming, coming, entering, entering the road. And I noticed that they were not looking. By the time we knew it, they fell. He fell, the, the, the person who was carrying fell, and the two people fell. And so we were like five, 50 meters away from them. 50 meters, yes, I would say 50 meters away from them. We stopped for a moment and just looked, wondering what was going to happen. I said, Jerry, it's not serious. In my mind, let's just pass by. So we passed by and start and continue to go. So we got to Kabusa Junction and we were seeing where we were going ahead of us. So we had to cross the road. And as we waited to cross the road, I noticed that Jerry was not moving. I said to Jerry, what's going on? Why are you not <laughs> moving? He said the motorbike just stopped him, that there's a motorbike in front of them. And before we know it, they gathered. Motorbike started surrounding our car. That we hit somebody, that we killed somebody. <laughs> it sounded like a joke at first. I was in shock, and Jerry was in shock too. So he came out of the car and went out. And they started, God, you know how they do. I saw them coming and they were accusing Jerry that he hit somebody and ran away and that somebody is laying down there dead. When I saw that the argument was getting hot, I came down. I said, we saw this. No, it was the guy that hit them, trying to explain they were like for where. So Jerry was trying to like, look at my car. See, if I had hit somebody, at least there would be some mark on the car. Look around the car. They looked and there was nothing but insisted. By now they are gathering in their hordes. And so they came around the car and saw a scratch on this side, an old scratch. And said, yes, that um, he hit him, even if there is scratch, a scratch or not. We were speaking to them in Hausa, which was one of our saving graces. I was like, they should fear God. That we saw this, that the guy in the motorbike actually hit the guy in uh, for where... They insisted it was us. From nowhere, from nowhere, two policemen pulled up. They are fresh camouflage, beautiful, nice looking people. And one of them came and inquired what it was. And they told him, they started saying, we killed somebody, blah, blah, blah. And we tried to explain. And he just waved them away and said, and entered our, our vehicle and said, let's go back to the scene of the accident. So we drove back. When we approached, he told us to park. We parked and he went. They had pulled the guy that hit the people, the motorbike guy, to the side of the road. And we saw the two guys that were hit going away. And I said, Jerry, look at the guys that were hit. And they were like checking themselves and walking away. Of course, nobody was dead because we saw it. So the policeman asked them and they told him that actually that this motorbike hit somebody and blah, blah, blah. So he came back, entered our car and said, let's go back, and told us it's nothing. I was in shock. And when we got to where we had picked him, we dropped him, and I don't even remember saying goodbye to them. What I remembered was that they were clean, shaven, nice policemen. And so we crossed, and I was looking for these guys that had gathered. When they do that kind of thing, they just scatter immediately. So you cannot pinpoint one person and all. So we went to church, and in the, in the Apo church, we stayed, I asked Jerry to testify, and he testified, and we came back. Then I, in church then, I had put some money in, my, in the envelope to just say thank you to the policemen, thinking that they were stationed there, but we could not find them. And now the impact and the import of what happened began to dawn on me, that if these policemen were not there, only God knows what they would have done, because they had started fighting, you know. 
So I came back. We, we had prayer in the afternoon after church. So I, Auntie Reggie and I, we sat down and I told her what had happened. And we began to pray. And I had my sister begin to sob. And I also started sobbing. And it, the, the, I was overwhelmed at what could have happened. That if those guys were not there, if those policemen, whom I now believe are angels, were not there, we could have been lynched. They would have burnt the car, blah, blah, blah. And to think that they would do it all on a lie, that we did not hit him and nobody was dead. I am so grateful for the ministry of angels. I insisted that we should go back to that same spot from church here from where and look for the police people. We went, we didn't find them. We were looking at every car that looked like them. We entered and then entered a filling station where we saw police people parked. It was not them. And then we went to their station at Apo Resettlement. And Aunt Reggie entered, met the DPO, told them the story and asked if those two police guys were there. They said they don't know, that they sent out people. Maybe they sent them and they went and took a private car, but they don't know if anybody was there. Those were angels on assignment. To think that they were there at that nick of time. To think that they were there at that moment. Where they pulled... When I saw them, I thought actually, actually thought they were moving with somebody. I thought they were carrying somebody somewhere. Not knowing that they were just on patrol. Now I know that God sent his angels to deliver us. So I just thought to return and say thank you, Lord. And for, to ask all of Family Worship Center, wherever you're watching me from, to th help me thank God. Because I don't know what would have happened. There wouldn't have been anybody to even tell the story. There, Jerry wouldn't have been there. I wouldn't have been there. They would just see a burnt car and burnt bodies and nobody to hold risk accountable. So I, I just thought to give you something to thank God for. Because sometimes we forget what God does. We take some things for granted. We travel, we come back, we lay down, we sleep, we wake up. We don't know what God does. If those, angels, if those policemen were not there, God, only God knows. So I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you think has not happened, what God has not done. Just, just be thanking God because you don't know what he has done that you don't even know of. How is it that this shambolistic, like somebody will say, these shambolistic elections have come and gone and we're still here and there is no blood on the streets and all of that. God is faithful, God is good to us, and God has done all things well. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you feel, no matter what you think is not adding up, I, be, I beg you, sit down and count your blessings. It will shock you what God has done.